الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل ويل للمطففين الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون ألا يظن أولئك أنهم مبعوثون ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس, يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and warns us, Woe to those who give short measure, who demand of other people full measure for themselves, but give less than they should when it is they who weigh or measure for others. Do these people not realize that they will be raised up on a mighty day, a day when everyone will stand before the Lord of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes a particular group of people here. And in this verse, He azza wa jal warns us of those people. And it is very unfortunate on how many of us fit this description so appropriately. How we expect from others when we ourselves will shortchange. How when we want our full right, but do not give it to others when it is due. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the hypocrisy of people who hold this belief. And He Azza wa Jal shows on how they are short and how they cheat and how they take advantage of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and reminds us and warns us of being short and cheating others. He Azza wa Jal emphasizes this and he says, woe to these people. How many of us take this warning to heart? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, tells us in a hadith Qudsi, whoever shows enmity to a wali of mine, then I have declared war against him. And my slave does not draw near to me with anything more loved to me than the religious duties I have obligated upon him. And my servant continues to draw near to me with nawafil or extra deeds until I love him. And when I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears, his sight with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, his foot with which he walks. And were he to ask something of me, I would surely give it to him. And were he to seek refuge with me, I would surely grant him refuge, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from his awliya. Ameen. And this is the opposite of what he Azza wa Jal describes. Because this person, every time he deals with his brother, every time he deals with his sister, he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the expectations that he has for himself are the same expectations that he holds from them. When I want to be treated well, it is very important that I treat others well. If I want to be honest, if I, want to, if I expect others to be honest, it is very important that I be honest. If I want people to be just when they deal with me, when they talk with me, when they act with me, I need to show those same characteristics. And one of the major problems we have in our community is not that we pray together, because walillah alhamd, we do. It's not that we don't fast together, because walillah alhamd, we do. It's not that we don't pay the zakat, because walillah alhamd, when it's time to distribute, and when it's time to give, we find that the community is the most generous of communities, walillah alhamd. And it's not that the people don't make hajj, walillah alhamd, there are multiple hajj programs, 
and packages that many of us have either taken advantage of or plan on taking advantage. And for those who have been unable to make Hajj, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for them. And for those that have, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Ameen. So if we understand it's not a religious problem, and all of these religious rights we are doing together, and all of these religious rights are being fulfilled, then where have we fallen short? We have fallen short in our tawfiq. We have fallen short because we take advantage of our brothers and sisters. We don't write down our agreements. We expect every time we walk into a Muslim business, every time we hire a Muslim person, every time we use a Muslim service, that we automatically should get a discount. That it should automatically be cheaper to the extent that we're willing to hurt the person in front of us. Every time we buy something, we will always ask, how much did you get it for? How much did you purchase it for? <laughs> I'm not the one that sets the prices. Why am I asking how much you got it for? Am I upset that he's making profit? When I raise the finances of my community, when I empower my community, and I raise the level, I'm part of that community. When they get raised, I'm raising with it. Why is it that financially we look so outward, we look so inward, and we're so selfish, and we're only looking for our own individual profits and what we can do with the money instead of looking for ways that we can invest back into the community? Why can we not be in positions where we're providing jobs, but instead we're in positions where we provide jobs and we are shy to hire Muslims? Why? Because we constantly take advantage of each other. And not in prayer, not in fasting, not in zakat, not in hajj, but in our business transactions. Instead of being happy that our brothers and sisters are prospering, or making money, or making a profit, we are always finding ways to try to skim that profit further. Why? Would I not want to make profit myself? And when we talk about love for your brother, what you love for yourself, who here does not love, love profit? Who here does not want to make money? And if we understand that we all want to make money, then we should allow this person to make money too. And what is the obligation now on the one who has a business or the one who's providing a service? Provide a good service. Follow good business practices. Why aren't the Muslims coming and shopping at my store? Because you're falling short, Ya Habibi, in some way, shape, or form. Either your products are expired, or your products are not good quality, or they're not available. If we want our businesses to flourish, we need to learn how to be competitive. This is part of good business practice. If I want people to use my service, it's very simple. Be sincere and provide a good service. I can't expect people to come to me just because I am Muslim. This is not enough. Even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to do business with the Jews with the presence of other Muslims. Why is it that I feel and I am entitled to get the business of the Muslim community when I am not providing a service that is equal, equal to or better to what my competitors are giving. If I am giving a good service, people will automatically come to me. It's amazing how I can go to a Walmart or a Target and walk out with the purchase happy. I just gave them money. I gave this company money. I gave Amazon money. And when that item arrives, I'm happy. And when I walk out of the Muslim business, I'm looking in my bag. Because I'm doubting what was given to me. And I'm doubting what I paid for. This doubt is something we created ourselves. This is not some outside force. I set the prices, I set the payment. And this is happening because of our own insecurities. If I don't want good for my brother, 
If I don't want good for my sister, if I don't want their business to succeed, then I myself will not be successful. Instead of being empowering, I have only become an obstacle to my Muslim brother. I have only become an obstacle to my Muslim sister. Instead of being gateways, instead of being advisors, instead of being uplifting, all of us act as anchors against one another. And think about the last time I made a purchase. And I was upset about that purchase, or the last time I made a purchase and I was happy about that purchase. And think about what happens in both cases. How many brothers and sisters do we know that have restaurants, or have businesses, and we will refuse to go back to those particular businesses? We will refuse to go back to those particular restaurants because we were upset with the quality, we were upset with the pricing, or we were upset with the service. These three variables are all in our control. Nobody's coming and forcing us. Walikhlas Aziz. Sincerity is so honorable. Do we think that this country is one of the best countries in the world because of insincerity? Talk to a teacher. Talk to a policeman. Talk to a fireman. Talk to any public servant. And ask them why they do their job or why they fulfill what they're supposed to do, even though the pay isn't that good, even though the timings are wrong. It's because they're sincere to the work. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises those people who are sincere to their work that He's going to give them what? He's going to give them the dunya. And is there any other place in the world that has as much dunya as we find here? This is the power of sincerity. Just imagine if we were sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or even being sincere to our work. It's unfortunate that many of us are not sincere to our work nor are we sincere to Allah. And we lose both the dunya and we lose both the akhirah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all sincere. Wa qulu khu bihada wa astaghfirullah li wa likum wa sallam muslim min kulli dhamul khati'a inna huwa al-ghufur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala sayyid al-anbiya wa mursaleen. نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد. الله سبحانه وتعالى states and tells us who is the رزق لكم في الأرض that he is the one that provides for you on this earth. and what does that mean and what should that tell us that regardless of the hardship, regardless of the difficulty, regardless of the adversity, the one who brought us to this point today will continue taking care of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb, He is our Lord. And what does that mean? It means that He is going to always take care of us. It might not be the way I want, but it is the way that He knows is best for me. And if I understand that He is my Rabb, and He is the one that raised me, He is the one that took care of me, He is the one that provided me, then I should have full belief that the one who brought me here and is allowing me to stand here, is allowing me to breathe here, is allowing me to survive here, is not going to come one day and pull the rug out from underneath me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He promises about Himself and He describes Himself as Rahman Rahim. That that mercy is going to be continuous and forever. We should not assume and we cannot assume that Allah is here to play tricks on us. That Allah is here to fool us. This is a petty human attribute. This is not a divine Rabbani one. And if we understand that He Azzawajal has provided us for us up until this point, then He Azzawajal, I can promise every single one of us here that He will continue prom providing for us until we pass. This is part of trust. This is part of love. This is part of our religion. And if we understand that He is going to take care of us, we are only obligated 
to do two things. We are obligated to be sincere, and we're obligated to work. And if we do those two things, we will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us in every single way, even in ways min in ways that we cannot even imagine. Is there anyone here who could raise their hand and say, I deserve everything I have today? It's not a single one of us. I know I'm not deserving. And if we know that we aren't deserving of what we have, then the only thing, only conclusion we can come to is because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us. Ameen. Uh, there is a sister who is ill. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give her full shifa and full recovery. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give shifa and full recovery to all of those who are ill. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of those who have passed. May He Azza wa Jal help all of those who are in any type of financial hardship or any type of financial difficulty. And may He Azza wa Jal help all of those who are in debt to come out of that debt. And lastly and finally, may He Azza wa Jal raise us to get, raise us together and gather us together in His paradise, just like He's gathered us here today.